When I lived at Captain Bodfish House, he was a widower, and he had uh, he had a girl working for him by the name of Jenny Andrade, and she cleaned for him and she cooked for him. And so when I went to live there, uh, she was wonderful because she would be there and she'd get my breakfast and get his breakfast, and then I'd come home for lunch and she'd have our lunch ready for us. And every night before Jenny would leave, she would turn down the bed covers before I went to bed, and she did the same thing for the captain. And I always ate in the dining room with the captain, and he had wonderful dishes and wonderful silverware, sterling silver hollowware we, we used to use all the time. But he served unusual things. He, uh, not unusual, but he served things that he liked. He'd have eel stifle, which is made of cut out of eels and, and potatoes. And he would have things like rabbit and duck. But it was really very elegant, and I had a nice little room there. He, he spent a lot of time at the Barnacle Club. He'd go down and sit and chat with all his friends. Once in a while, he'd chat with me. But the thing that I was intrigued with was that he had two families. He had the family that lived on Martha's Vineyard, and then he had the family of the Eskimo woman he married in, in Alaska. And I can remember one time later on, the son from Alaska came to visit him, and he and his brothers met. And it, was, it was interesting. He said, oh, this is my son, and he's come from Alaska. And, and, and then gossip around town had it, you know. I mean, they accepted it. It was part of the thing. This, this was a, a long while after the, the wife here had died, and I think, the, I think just the two sons and he met, and he wanted to see where his father lived and things like that, and his son was probably maybe around in the 30s or something when he finally came here. Cap Bodfish one time was telling me about, he, he, was, he was a little bit lame, and he said it was because of his, mainly because of his toe. He, when he was in the attic, his toe froze, and he said he knew that it would get gangrenous if he didn't take care of it right away, and so he had to cut it off. He called the first mate in, and he said, I just want you to stay here to watch what I'm doing, and he said, but I may faint, and so he told the first mate to see that he, he would be all right. Being the captain of the ship, he was also the, the medical person, in charge of the medications and the whiskeys and all the things that would deaden your pain, you know. So then he said, I got some rum, and he said, and I drank some rum, and he said, I had to figure out how much I could, uh, how much rum I could drink. I had to get myself, so I was a little bit numb, but I, I wanted to be sure I cut off my toe instead of my whole foot, and it worked. But he said, I had to have the mate there because I just didn't want to have more trouble than I already had.